So 2018 has come and gone at this point, and one of the big talking points for PlayStation gamers this year has been the PlayStation Plus game offerings as a subscriber. In 2017, the PlayStation Plus game offerings were a giant point of contention. A lot of gamers were disappointed by the games they were getting as Plus subscribers. And yes, for some, the Plus games are just seen as added benefits because you're paying to play online anyway. I never have agreed with the fact that we have to pay to play online. That's something, in my opinion, that just should be free, but hey, we're Living in this world where we do have to pay to play online, at the very least, let's try to get some good games with our subscription as well. And while 2017 was a lackluster month, I think Sony really turned it around in 2018, and Polygon has a great breakdown of every game we got every month with its average score, average age, total value, and I want to go through that. If you guys want to break down from them, I'm going to put that link in the description box down below. Of course, I'll give you guys my own input in what I thought of every specific month. But a couple things to note, of course, if you're paying $9.99 a month, month for PlayStation Plus, you're probably gonna value it a little bit differently, but I have always said you should be resubscribing to a 12-month PlayStation Plus subscription during the holiday time where it's readily available for around $39.99, maybe $44.99. Whatever price that 12-month subscription is at, you're usually paying around $3 and change to $4 a month, and that's a much more palatable price point to pay than, say, $10 a month if you're going month by month, or even if you're paying $60 a year, that turns out to $5 a month. Also, I am a little bit more understanding with the plus offerings. I know there are a lot of people that are expecting games like Monster Hunter World, Marvel, Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. They're expecting the biggest games the PlayStation 4 has to offer in any given year to show up as plus titles, but then they don't realize that a lot of people are just paying $3 and change or $4 a month, and it doesn't make any business sense to offer those games as plus titles. But with that being said, let's go into it. Month by month, we'll go January to December, and I'm also going to round it out by giving each month a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And we are just looking at the PlayStation 4 four offerings or games that were PlayStation Vita titles and are crossed by with the PlayStation 4. So with that being said, let's get started with January. So January had Deus Ex Mankind Divided, a pretty good action RPG. Then we had Batman the Telltale series. Psychopath Mandatory Happiness was also a PlayStation Vita title that was crossed by with the PlayStation 4. And then we also had Uncanny Valley. That was another Vita title crossed by with the PlayStation 4. And for you guys with PSVR, we also had Star Blood Arena. There's no other way to slice it. January was an absolute thumbs up. Deus Ex Mankind Divided Alone is a big budget title. Yes, it's a little bit older, and at this point, it is available relatively cheap, but that's still a game a lot of people checked out. Batman the Telltale series can't go wrong with a Telltale experience. A Telltale game is good to have as an additional title. It can't be the highlight of any given month, but in January, the highlight was Deus Ex, so to have Batman as a secondary title, that's perfectly fine. And then you have games like Psychopath Mandatory Happiness. Yes, a more niche title, but definitely an audience for that game and uncanny Valley as well. So January is getting a thumbs up from me. Moving on to that, February was probably one of the weaker months of 2018. On the PlayStation 4, we had Knack. That was a PS4 launch title that I don't think anyone thought was very good. We also had Rhyme, which was a pretty good game. And then for the cross-buy titles, which was probably the highlight out of February's lineup, we had Grand Kingdom. That's a pretty cool strategy JRPG. However, the overall quality of February just does not compare to a lot of the other months. Knack is just not a very good game. Rhyme is an interesting title, but it has its imperfections too, and it's not that highlighting game for any given month, and Knack isn't that game either. Rhyme would act great just like Batman the Telltale series as a secondary title, complementing another major title, but you don't have that major title in February, and Grand Kingdom, while that was a game I was very fond of, that's definitely a more niche game that, again, doesn't highlight any given month, so February, we're gonna have to give that a thumbs down. Moving on to more. March. March was the most insane PlayStation Plus month ever. I don't think I have to sell this to anyone, but let's go over it anyway. On the PlayStation 4, we had Bloodborne, incredible game. Ratchet and Clank, incredible game. We also had Mighty Number no. 9. Okay, that game isn't very good, but just added on top of Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank. That's pretty good. And then PlayStation Vita cross buy titles included Claire Extended Cut and Bombing Busters. All right, this is obviously a no-brainer. The only issue you could have with March is like if you had your PlayStation 4 for a very long time, you probably already checked out Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank, but for a lot of you guys that didn't, this month was absolutely insane. Obviously, a clear thumbs up. Moving on to April, we had Mad Max, which I thought was a great open world game and a very underrated one, released the same day as Metal Gear Solid 5, which was one of the reasons I think it went a little bit underrated, but a very good game. We also had Trackmania Turbo, which is a racing game that I feel like can highlight a month, but again, Mad Max was the highlighting game of April, so Trackmania Turbo acts as a pretty good secondary title, so I'm all good with that. And then as far as cross by titles, we had 99 Vitas and Qbert Reboot. Booted. This isn't a bad month by any means. I'm definitely not going to give it a thumbs down, but it's not as strong of a thumbs up as some of the other thumbs up like January and March. This is more of a thumbs in the middle, but I am going towards up, so I'll give it a 
thumbs up. Moving on from that, May was another very good month. We had Beyond Two Souls, which yes, Beyond Two Souls isn't an incredible game. I think it's Quantic Dream's weakest title. However, do remember that May also brought the release of Detroit Become Human. So I'm always a big fan of releasing games on PlayStation Plus that promote upcoming titles. And I think they got it right with Beyond Two Souls. Honestly, I would have rather they offered Heavy Rain in May, but we'll get to Heavy Rain in a little bit. But Beyond Two Souls was still a good offering given the timetable. And there is an interesting story there, just one that gets a little bit muddled. We also had Rayman Legends, which is an absolutely incredible platformer that not enough people have played. If you are even remotely into platformers, Rayman Legends is an incredible game and I highly, highly recommend it. And as far as cross play titles go, we have King Oddball and Furman's. May was a pretty good month, I think. Beyond Two Souls was a great game to offer, also to promote Detroit Become Human and get people familiarized with Quantic Dream's experience. And then Rayman Legends is a tremendous game. That's definitely a thumbs up from me. Moving on from that, June was another fantastic month in my eyes. We had XCOM 2, an awesome tactical game that is more associated with PC gaming. However, it makes a decent transition over to PlayStation 4. Now, this is the base XCOM 2 game. You don't get the additional content, but around the time this game was a plus title, when XCOM 2 was going on sale, it would still be like $20. So again, as an offering as a plus title, that's definitely great. We also had Trials Fusion. A Trials game acts as a great complimentary title. While I can't highlight any month, complimenting XCOM 2 is definitely great as a title like Trials Fusion is pretty addicting. And it's a title that I feel like a lot of people can just jump in and play and some people will get super, super invested into. And then lastly, do remember that June also brought the surprise edition of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which another Call of Duty game, pretty good single player campaign in there. The multiplayer is still pretty active. And this is without a doubt a home run. You're getting XCOM 2, you're getting Black Ops 3, you're getting Trials Fusion to round things out. Paying $4 and change for all that, that's an easy thumbs up from me. Moving on from that, now we have July. July brought forth the aforementioned Heavy Rain, which I did think was Quantic Dreams' better title. Heavy Rain is a very engaging game that at this point in 2018 has shown its age a little bit, but back in 2010, this was an absolutely incredible game, and while it does show its aging, it's still an enjoyable experience today. We also got Absolver, which was a very interesting game. We had talked a lot about this game ahead of its release. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to do all too well from a sales standpoint, but still a pretty nice addition, and that game was going for a relatively high price. I think on sale, it was still going for like $15, so as a plus title, that's pretty good. And then as a cross-buy title, you were also getting Space Overlords. Now, this is probably the one month out of all of these that I am kind of iffy on. We've gotten thumbs up so many times, and considering the bar has been set pretty high for thumbs up, this is one that's closer to the thumbs in the middle, maybe tilting downwards, but honestly, it's still a relatively good month, and if you're paying $3 in change or $4 a month for PlayStation Plus, this is still a relatively good month. You know what? I'm gonna change my mind on the fly, because at the end of the day, I do think this month is worth what you're paying. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Moving on from that, now we have August, which I would say is a pretty good month. Highlighting the month of August was Mafia 3, which is great. Mafia 3 was a title that released back in 2015. I was super excited for it because I played Mafia 2, and they were promoting Mafia 3 as this game that was making a transition into the open world. I was thinking, man, there's no way this game could go wrong. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out all too great, at least not up to my expectation level. However, all these years later, to get the title as just a plus title, it's a very good game that has a very good story, great voice acting, great character development. The only area it does kind of falter is the gameplay, and that's kind of a big issue. But overall, to get it as a plus title, Mafia 3 is a great offering, and even when it goes on sale now, it's still like $12 to $15, so it's still holding up in value. Dead by Daylight is a very good horror multiplayer game, and I'm always a big fan of offering multiplayer games as plus title. Maybe not these smaller multiplayer games to highlight a plus month, but again, as a complimentary title, which Dead by Daylight is to Mafia 3, it's a great complimentary experience because if your boys are plus subscribers, all of them can download it, and then you could have the best experience possible playing Dead by Daylight with a group of friends. August is a thumbs up from me. Moving on from that, now September was a little bit interesting. Destiny 2 was actually given out at the end of August. They just did that so people could get in ahead of the Forsaken expansion and they could experience the weekend event, but I am still considering that a September game because it dropped on August 30th and it carried over into September, so Destiny 2 was a part of the September offerings. I know Destiny 2 definitely isn't everyone's favorite game, but again, a multiplayer-oriented experience and a very notable game in its own right. I'm sure you could get a bunch of your friends to download it if they hadn't checked out Destiny 2 yet. It's a good game as a plus offering, and with Destiny 2 Forsaken dropping in September, I thought that was a pretty good idea to offer that game as a plus title. And it doesn't stop there. Destiny 2 wasn't the only big budget title you got. You also got God of War 3 Remastered, and that could be the headlining game for any plus month, but considering you're getting that on top of Destiny 2, it's even better, and considering that a lot of people were introduced to the God of War franchise in 2018, offering God 
God of War 3 Remastered, while it's a different style of game, it's still a very good game. And to get that on top of Destiny 2, I would say is pretty good. And it doesn't stop there. We also got another World 20th Anniversary Edition, Cube Director's Cut, Sparkle 2, and Foul Play. So on top of Destiny 2 and God of War 3, you got a bunch of smaller titles to round things out. September's a thumbs up. All right, now, without a doubt, October was the weakest month of the year. October, of course, a horror-themed month, so offering Friday the 13th the game made a lot of sense. However, this is just not a very good game, and while I am in favor of offering multiplayer experiences on PlayStation Plus, just a few months prior, we got Dead by Daylight, which is a very similar experience, so Friday the 13th just kind of missed timing a little bit. We already got Dead by Daylight, which I'll say is a better game, and yes, it has the timing and the fact that it's October and it's Halloween-themed, but it's not a very good game, so that's not great to me. Laser League is a pretty interesting multiplayer title, but a title that not a lot of people checked out, and even if you checked out with Plus, the community did dissipate a little bit after the fact, so the headlining games aren't very good, but what about the other titles? Well, there were some interesting games with The Bridge, Rocket Bridge 2 Evolution. The most interesting title, and a title that Sony didn't promote at all really in October, was 2064 Read Only Memories, a very interesting narrative-driven game, but unfortunately not enough to redeem October. That's an easy thumbs down from me. Moving on from that, November, again, one of the better months. First up, we got Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, which I was a big fan of this game on last generation platforms. However, the issue with this game was that it was so freaking short. You could complete it in four to five hours. And then when it was announced that it was being remastered onto the PlayStation 4, I got pretty excited. And then they announced the price for this game being $59.99. And I was like, okay, absolutely not worth $59.99. This was a game that should have been remastered and priced at $19.99. That is not hyperbole. Bulletstorm was not worth that full price. But as a PlayStation Plus title, I can definitely get behind that. It's a very chaotic, arcadey first-person shooter that I can easily recommend. Of course, a lot of vulgarity, but a very fun game nonetheless. And of course, November did bring with it Yakuza Kiwami on top of Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, which I thought was a great offering. I thought they should have offered that earlier in the year to promote Yakuza 6's release, but hey, better late than never. And you guys know how I feel about the Yakuza games. They are terrific, terrific games. And considering it's still a little bit underrated at this point to offer it as a plus title, I thought would increase the popularity popularity, and I thought they definitely got that right. Rounding things out, we also had Burly Men at Sea and Roundabout. Those were two cross-buy titles, so without a doubt, November, easy thumbs up from me. And lastly, December was one month that it seemed like a lot of gamers were disappointed in, but I don't really understand why. First up, we had Soma, which was done by Frictional Games, the guys that did Amnesia, and this is a terrific survival horror game. I honestly thought it was better than Amnesia The Dark Descent, but whatever, if you like horror games, this definitely sets a great atmosphere, great tone, light on the gameplay, but still, what you're getting out of Soma is very, very good. And you're also getting the arcade racing title in Onrush, and Onrush, while it's not a game a lot of people know about, this was a very recent release, so to offer that as a plus title, this quickly probably indicative of how that game is doing from a sales standpoint and if you're into racing games that's a great one to get on top of soma and rounding things out and this wasn't highlighted a lot in december sony didn't really promote it but it might have been the best game offered in december and that was icono class it was a cross by title with the ps vita it's available on the ps4 and that's a terrific 2d action title so without a doubt to me soma's a terrific game i don't know if enough people have played that title and you just don't understand how good that game is that's an awesome offering on rush is a very recent release still going for a pretty hefty price on the PlayStation Store, so that's a great addition. And then Iconoclast didn't create a lot of buzz, but that's a great game as well. So three great titles for $3 and change if you're smart about picking up PS Plus. That's an easy thumbs up from me. So that concludes it. I think overall, breaking it down game by game, you have to concede to the fact that 2018 has been a very positive month for PlayStation Plus. Has it been absolutely perfect? Maybe not. Hey, there were months like February and October that just weren't very good, and July, I was kind of close to giving it a thumbs down, but honestly, when you assess it, I do think it's a thumbs up. And let's say you do want to go with the thumbs down for July. Okay, I'll give you that. But then the other nine months I thought were very good. Months like June were incredible. August was really good. March, of course, goes without saying was one of the best, if not the best month in Plus history. And I think overall, if you're dropping $40 a year for PlayStation Plus with all of the games that you've gotten, yes, while the games don't persist beyond your PlayStation Plus subscription, which has always been an issue, Games with Gold doesn't do that if you're not aware. I hope that Sony at some point remedies that. I think overall the game offerings have been rather good good. But that's going to conclude this video. What do you think of 2018's PlayStation Plus offerings? I think I put a very good argument on why it's been really good, but sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.